Hey, what's up folks? How's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. So if you don't know already, for the past couple of weeks, I've been testing out the new generation of MacBook Pros powered by the M1 Pro processor. We've been testing out both the 14.2 and 16.2 inch version of the laptops and uh, definitely have a lot to say. Hopefully this video will give you a good idea in terms of what the key differences are between these two from a performance, design, and user experience perspective. Firstly, I want to get into the price differences between the two. Uh, specifically for the versions that we have, which are the baseline configuration, the starting price of both these two are $2,000 for the 14 inch and $2,500 for the 16 inch. If you get the baseline configuration of the 14 inch, you get an eight core CPU, 14 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, as well as 512 gigabytes of long-term solid state storage. For the quote unquote poor man's version of the 16 inch version of the MacBook Pro starts at $2,500, the one that we have exactly over here. We also have a 10 core M1 Pro CPU, a 16 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of unified memory, as well as 512 gigabytes of long-term storage. Now, if you have a little bit more chunk of change lying around, you can also get the M1 Pro version of the 16 inch MacBook Pro that comes with a similar 10 core CPU, but a 32 core GPU, double your RAM capacity up to 64 gigabytes, as well as your long-term solid state storage up to eight terabytes. Beyond just the internal specification, differences, there are some key similarities that are important to know. Firstly, in terms of ports and connectivity options, one thing that Apple uh, actually brought back was actually some ports and connectivity options compared to just having USB-C or Thunderbolt connections. So on both of them, they're the exact same configuration where you have three Thunderbolt 4 or USB-C ports, a full-size SD card slot, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, as well as a full-size HDMI output. Furthermore, both of these two have the upgraded 1080p FaceTime camera with the additional camera bump thanks to the fact that you have much smaller bezels on these models compared to the previous generation. They have the same three array studio quality microphones built inside and besides the uh, size difference they have the similar speaker configuration with six speakers with force cancelling woofers. Now the footprint differences between the 16 and 14 inch version isn't that great basically the 16 inch is about 43 mil wider 27 millimeters deeper in its uh, clamshell position. Additionally, from a weight and thickness perspective, the 16 inch isn't actually that much thicker at 16.8 millimeters versus 15.5 millimeters, but it definitely feels a lot heavier in your hand when you're carrying it around because it weighs almost half a kilogram more. Beyond that, both of them are using the exact same keyboard with 78 keys for the US spec model, 12 full height function keys, as well as uh, four arrow keys with the inverted T arrangement found on most MacBooks. The tactile response that the keyboard provides is excellent, super comfortable to type on for a prolonged period of time. The only real difference is on the size of the Force Touch trackpad, which is pretty darn huge on the 14 inch to begin with. But if you get the 16 inch, it's absolutely ginormous, occupying most of the area where you typically find your palms. But thankfully, there's still enough room for your palms uh, to rest on. And it's very nice to have a large scale trackpad like this, especially for multi touch commands and fine control movements. Moving forward in terms of the displays themselves, besides the size difference that we talked about, they're using the exact same liquid Retina XDR display, has ProMotion 120 hertz maximum refresh rate, different native resolution. The 14.2 inch has a native resolution of 3024 by 1964, PPI count of 253.9 versus you're looking at 3456 by 2234 on the 16.2 inch MacBook Pro with a PPI count of a very similar 254. The sustained uh, brightness levels are around 1000 nits and peak brightness levels go up to 1600 nits with HDR10 plus certification. Both displays look absolutely fantastic uh, viewing 4K Ultra HD content and it's definitely also nice to have that 120 hertz uh, ProMotion in order to make web browsing and every day-to-day -day use of your computing experience a lot more smooth and dynamic plus consuming action or sports is definitely nicer on the 120 hertz panel in addition to the gaming benefits 
Moreover, let's actually talk about the performance uh, results that we're getting out of both these two in terms of the GPU, CPU, RAM, and SSD performance. We're gonna take a look at our benchmark results. As we mentioned before, we're using the baseline configuration on both models. Now, firstly, take a look at our Cinebench R23 benchmark results, which is gonna specifically test out our multi-core and single-core performance on our CPU side. And on the 16-inch version of the MacBook Pro, we're getting over 12,000 points versus 9,500 points on the 14-inch and around uh, the same level at 1500 points on the single core side. We'll also throw in the 13 inch uh, MacBook Pro, which came with the original M1 Pro chip. And I got around 7,700 points on the multi-core side and the same 1500 points on the single core side. Moving forward, let's take a look at our Geekbench results. And we can see a similar trend where uh, the 10 core M1 Pro chip is scoring the best, getting over 12,000 points versus just under 10,000 points on the 14 inch version of the MacBook Pro and uh, the first generation M1 chip scored around 7,600 points. All uh, three of these processors on the single core side are getting very similar performance at right around 1,700 points. Furthermore, in terms of testing on the GPUs, we utilize the metal benchmarking suite within Geekbench and our uh, 16 core GPU got around 38,000 points on the 16 inch MacBook Pro versus uh, the 14 core M1 Pro chip scored around 36,000 points versus 21,000 points on the original eight core GPU found on the first gen M1 chip. Furthermore, we also utilize Unigen's Valley Benchmarking a tool, which is a synthetic gaming benchmark, set the native resolution to 1920 by 1080 ultra detail settings, and our 16-inch version of the MacBook Pro got best at 76.2 uh, average frames per second on the benchmark, 74.5 average frames per second on the 14-inch, and uh, the 13-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip got 47.8 average frames per second in the exact same scenario. Moving forward, in terms of testing out the uh, memory performance on our RAM, specifically using Amorphous uh, MemMark on the uh, sequential at 128K setting, we got 106 and 118 gigabytes second read and write respectively on the 16 inch which was the fastest score second was the 14 inch at 102 and 114 gigabytes a second and the older generation 13 inch macbook pro got pretty much half the bandwidth at 46 and 64 gigabytes a second read and write respectively furthermore testing out the ssd performance using blackmagic speed test the sequential read and write performance was again fastest on the 16 inch it topped out around 5.7 and 5.3 gigabytes a second read and write respectively followed by the 14 inch at 4.3 8 and 5.3 gigabytes a second and the 13 inch macbook pro which i always thought had a super fast ssd came out last at uh, 2 gigabytes a second write and 2.8 gigabytes a second read Moving on, I've been definitely testing uh, these two laptops out specifically for multimedia-based applications as workstation-grade PCs uh, with uh, utilizing Logic for audio work-related tasks and uh, video editing using Premiere Pro with 4K video projects. Now, using Logic, I want to measure the bounce or export time that it took a 3-minute, 25-second project to uh, convert into MP3. Simply measure the time it took on each laptop to do that task. And on the 16-inch MacBook Pro, it only took about 24 seconds to export that track versus 27 seconds on the 14-inch and 33 seconds on the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Beyond that, we also measured the uh, total export time it took to uh, render out a 4K 30fps 5-minute project on Premiere Pro. And in the exact same scenario again, the 16-inch uh, version of the MacBook Pro exported that 4k file in 3 minutes 16 seconds versus 3 minutes 17 seconds on the 14 inch and the 13 inch with the exact same project and settings did that same task in 6 minutes 56 seconds. Lastly, one of the big benefits I think on the 16 inch MacBook Pro is the fact they do have a larger capacitor battery, which will definitely get you uh, longer run times based on our experience, which we'll talk about. But in terms of the actual capacity itself, you're looking at a 100 watt hour battery on the 16 inch versus 70 watt hour battery on the 14.2 inch. 
Apple claims that on the 16 inch you can get up to 21 hours of video playback, 14 hours of wireless web, and on the 14 inch you can get 17 hours of video playback and 11 hours of wireless web. Now based on my experience thus far, I would definitely say that the 16 inch is extremely impressive in terms of its battery performance. I've had at least three days where I haven't had to charge it and I've been using it pretty much on a constant basis. And to do a more controlled test and analysis in terms of the battery performance, we usually like to do a video playback test typically using the VLC app since uh, it's a nice cross compatible platform that we can use on many uh, different devices but uh, right now I found that the M1 processor is not very power efficient when you're using the VLC app it's a lot better when you're using QuickTime which is actually what Apple uh, actually uses to measure their uh, video playback time so I did the exact same thing played the exact same video airplane mode 50% brightness using QuickTime and very impressively with the 16 inch macbook pro we got a total runtime of 29 hours and 50 minutes versus in the exact same scenario with a couple of different charge and discharge cycles on the 14 inch we got 15 hours and 12 minutes runtime using again the QuickTime app in the exact same scenario so super impressive to see uh, this capability from a battery perspective on uh, the 16 inch the 14 inch is definitely not bad but i can't really Really think of any other uh, large screen laptop that's going to perform this well in terms of battery performance and also give you the performance that the 16 inch macbook pro is delivering right now but really on that guys that's really it. now we have a full-on gaming uh, test with the 16 inch to test out how it performs on most of the titles that are available on mac os 10 so if you're interested in it specifically for gaming definitely check that video out and we're also going to be doing an ultimate setup guide uh, for creating a desktop like setup using the new generation macbook pro so uh, check out all that information in the description down below if you haven't done so please make sure to subscribe have post notifications turned on and like and share the video if you haven't done so already thanks again for your support and we'll see you real soon in the next one take care